even before the Akron was lost back in 1933, Navy airshipmen realized their plane should do the scout. So a radical new airship's fighter was designed. Same wingspan, but much lighter than the Sparrowhawk, the largely hardwood fighter with only pit-pin landing gear would have outperformed heavier planes built to withstand brutal carrier landings. The Bureau of Aeronautics' 9 million cubic foot rigid airship design initially placed nine of these fighters along its keel, but then changed to strike capability with Northrop dive bombers. BT-1 evolved into XBT-2, which would become the SBD. The big 40-foot span bomber was an awkward fit on flat tops, but its lack of folding wings would have been no problem once equipped with skyhooks. Fitted with the large drop tank and without the heavy landing gear, the SBD Z-1 would have had extended range and performance. Macon surviving would have allowed SBD Z-1s to train with her in a preparation for deployment with the ZRCV. A later Goodyear design showed a larger airship could carry both defensive fighters and scout bombers. In our motion picture, the USS Long Island would carry nine scout dive bombers and eight fighters. Sparrowhawk-sized fighters stowed inside the hull while the bombers hung along the keel. Based in Darwin, she would have given the American fleet high-performance scouting and strike spirit. Highly maneuverable hook-on fighters would turn with the Zero and would defend against bomber attack if their airship was caught too close to the front. The giant Emily flying boat would have been the airship's only natural enemy. <laughs>